we take this exact approach with all of our clients, whether they have a million plus followers online or whether they have 200 followers online or even less. It doesn't matter. The cool thing is that if you are a personal brand and you're trying to build a brand based on your own interests, the things you love doing, the things you love sharing, it's very easy to pigeonhole yourself into a hole, into a, into a corner. And that's something that happened to me. And it wasn't until I started opening up the content that I was creating to things that were in accordance with my highest values, was I able to start enjoying the process. A few years ago when we were running our digital marketing agency and running the social media accounts for a bunch of different brands, one of the biggest problems they faced were having a personality, shining through the logo, shining through the brand colors, shining through all of that. And one thing that they were missing was the intention behind the content they were creating was only to make more sales. And the intention that we're going to take and the intention I want you to internalize is to know that every single piece of content you create is a gift from you to your audience. And so if you can get into that mindset of giving your audience a gift every single time you publish some content, it's going to make you stand head and shoulders above your competition. Most of the people on Instagram and social media right now literally just trying to flog products. So step one that I want you to take is to identify what your one word uniqueness is. Now this is a framework from my mentor Rory Vaden and it really changed the game for us and our clients. So you can see over here my one word uniqueness is clarity. I've identified clarity as the one word that I want to be known for on planet Earth. So that everything that I create, any, anything that I post on social media has to be through the lens of clarity. So I have to, in my captions, talk about how this is helping people achieve clarity. In my videos, I have to always bring it back to how do I take you from a place of confusion, which is my problem, to a space of clarity. So step one, identify what your one word uniqueness is and what you want to be known for on social media. And a really awesome test to understand that if you know what your one word uniqueness is going to be is whether it gives you goosebumps on the back of your neck. So if your word does not inspire you, if your word does not make you feel amazing and, and make you want to jump with joy and share it with the world, then it's probably not your word. So make sure that the word excites you, it feels great. Okay. Now, once you've got that one word, you then want to break it down into four pillars. Now you can see here, I've got four content pillars here that I want to talk about on social media. Now, the pillars that you're creating for your content strategy are essentially going to be your values. These are your life's values, the things that you value most in the world. The reason that we pin our pillars to our highest values is because it gives you an infinite source of inspiration. And as a personal brand, you want to be talking from that place of inspiration. You want to be talking from the heart and speaking in accordance to your highest values helps you do that. And one way that I found my highest values, which are business, fitness, spirituality and teaching. These are my four highest values in life. The, the way I found these out were by going to Dr. John Demartini's website and doing the free values hierarchy test. You can go through a process where you ask you a bunch of questions and you can identify what your highest values are in life. And this will give you so much clarity in what you do, how you structure your day, and most importantly, how you structure your content marketing. Because it's all going to be passed through the lens of what you want to be known for, in my instance, clarity. And I break it down into my top four values, okay, business, fitness, spirituality, and teaching. And these become the basis of all of my content. Okay, so that's step one. And step two is identify what your content pillars are. Once you've identified your core values, take one of your values, and then break that value down into three or four different subtopics. Okay, so these subtopics are what make up your main pillar essentially. So you can see how here business being my my one core pillar, I can break that down into marketing, sales, branding and offers. And then that creates the next layer down of things that I can rotate through and talk about whenever I want to. Now it's important on the step before this when we broke it down into our pillars, always remember that there is going to be a certain percentage of content that you're going to speak about more. 
Now, it's very rare that I speak about athleticism and fitness, and I speak mainly about business and spirituality. And it's okay, you can decide how much you wanna talk about one pillar or the other, but knowing what your pillars are is gonna allow you to rotate through these and never run out of content ideas, because if there becomes a day where I feel inspired to create something about fitness, I can go ahead and do that. And I can always relate it back to my uniqueness of clarity. All right, so now what we've done is we've taken our pillar, we broke it down into a subtopic, and then we took that topic and broken it down into these different content types. Okay, so the content types are things that you can apply to all of your subtopics under all of your pillars. So that's what the way you break it down. You go pillars, subtopics, and then you break them down into industry myths, personal stories, quick tips, step-by-step, -step, common mistakes, and FAQ. All right, so what we do is when we create our content is we check, okay, what pillar are we gonna talk about today? What are we gonna teach about? What topic is it gonna be marketing? Is it gonna be sales? And then we break it down into a, a quick tips, step-by-step -step FAQ, common mistakes, industry myths, and personal stories. Now, for example, this YouTube video right now is business, marketing, step-by-step, -step, because I'm giving you a step-by-step -step formula on how to do this yourself. And this really is the key to all social media content marketing, is if you can break your stuff down into bite-sized processes and unique frameworks, that is the core to thought leadership content. So what you can do is work out what your one word uniqueness is, work out what your four highest values are, which are gonna be your content pillars, break those down into three or four subtopics, and then break those subtopics down into these content types, and you can just keep repeating this over and over as many times as you want. You don't have to always reinvent the wheel. You don't have to come up with new content ideas all the time. You just have to recycle, repurpose, and keep talking about your main pillars. And one thing people really forget about is they will just then talk about everything related to marketing. But remember that everything related to marketing, what you're talking about here, is being run through the lens of clarity, run through the lens of your own uniqueness. Whatever that one word is of yours, all of the content you produce needs to be run through that lens, through that idea. So I'm giving you clarity through your content strategy on how you can produce your own content using this framework. So what I would love you to do after this is to think about and feel into what are your highest values and how do they relate to what you do professionally. Because remember, social media, if we are running our businesses with it, we do wanna make money through it. We wanna run successful and sustainable businesses. And the key to a sustainable personal brand is to talk about more than just the thing that makes you money. To show people personal stories, to show people other aspects of your life. Because you are a multi-dimensional human being, having multiple content pillars will help you communicate that to the world. And at the end of the day, the purpose of content marketing is to build trust with your audience. And always remember that trust compresses the transaction timeline. So the more people trust you, the shorter the transaction timeline will be and the more regularly people will, will reach out to you for sales calls and you'll start generating inbound leads. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button, hit subscribe if you like this style of content and comment if this resonates with you. All the best.